God speaks, he does not speak like a human being who speaks to another human being. When his voice utters, the elements have to acknowledge it. The air, the ear, the heart, the finances, worlds beyond in galaxies, millions and hundreds of millions of miles away. Even those worlds hear the word that he speaks to us in this world. Angels bow and people die. The earth shivers with earthquakes and the atmosphere changes only when the Lord says, I love you. It is the voice of the Creator that tells his creature he loves them and everything around that he has ever created recognizes the voice of its Creator. And so there's more taking place when God says, Thus says the Lord. You have to understand that everything around you, that was, see, everything was made by thus saith the Lord. And so it recognizes his voice. And so the prophet has to guard the voice of God. He has to protect the voice of God. He cannot sell it cheaply. He cannot diffuse it and, and, and lessen its importance. He cannot offer it to those that are not ready for it and those that will not appreciate it. He must give it to those who understand it. Unfortunately, unfortunately, when you understand the value of God's Word, two things happen. The prophet understands the value of the Word of the Lord, therefore he does not give it away. Because if you give it to people that don't respect it, they will defile it. So there is an intricate attachment between finances and prophecy, unfortunately. Now this is why. Because many real prophets will be seen as men that are only after money. And it has nothing to do with money. Offerings and the, and the thing have nothing to do with money. It has everything to do with prophecy. You getting it? Because only those that value God's word are worthy to receive God's word. Even Jesus stood at the offering plate and told the disciples which one gives the most. Even he determined to teach the greatest lessons of spirituality at the place of finances because finances are the closest thing to our heart. Because what we place value on are the things that are important to us. What we don't place value on are the things that are not important. So, two things can happen. One person who is a false prophet can abuse prophecy to manipulate people's finances to prosper at the expense of truth. A real prophet cannot neglect finances and oftentimes will be associated as a false prophet because of finances. Because he has to understand that the word of the Lord does not come just to anybody. It comes to those that value it. So it has nothing to do with money. It has everything to do with the value of God's word. And to those, those that truly understand the word of the Lord, don't. The Bible tells us to buy the truth and sell it now. You're not allowed to sell it, but you're not allowed to take it for free. You get it? I'm not allowed to sell the word, but you're not allowed to receive it without paying for it. So the burden is actually on you. Are you getting me? And when you minister to other people, if you give it away free, then you're selling them short. Because unless they buy it, they can't take on. You can have a prophecy over your life, but unless you pay for it, unless you sell something that's valuable, guess what? You'll never walk it out. Some of you have prophecies hanging over your life right now that will never be fulfilled because you never valued them enough to buy the truth. It is unlawful for the prophet to sell it. It is unlawful for the people to receive it for free. You get it? So, a prophet that sells prophecy, false prophet. People that take prophecy for free, false people. Now, it doesn't mean that the word is false. It means that their motivation has defiled something sacred. So you see that there, there's, and, 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 and it almost sounds like a contradiction, but it's the way God safeguards his word. God said, this is the way, I mean, the genius of God, to, just that one idea is genius because God puts the burden again, really, on the value of the word. God says, if, it's, if you don't think that what you have received is valuable, then don't put nothing on it. 
but if it's valuable, buy the truth, but don't sell it. Ain't nothing worse than a person giving you a gift of great value. You come to their house next week, and they have gave it to somebody else. My mother gave me a Christmas present last year that I gave her 10 years ago. She didn't even remember. <laughs> she didn't even remember I'd given it to her. I said, well, that's the last time I spent any money for you. You get a card and a check. That's all you're going to get. And she didn't even know. She had re-gifted me my gift. I said, well, that's okay. At least you should have some, put some names on it so you know what to, to give it to you. And it's the same thing with the word of the Lord. When God gives it to us, God wants to be able to come back into your life and see that you have valued the gift that he has given to you. Amos 8 and 11 says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. Amos 8 and 11 says, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord. There shall be a famine. I shall send a famine in the land. But not a famine of bread, nor of thirst for water. But it shall be for the hearing. Everybody say hearing. It should be for the hearing of God's word. Now, if there is a famine, if there is a shortage, if there is a lack, it is not for the preaching of God's word. We have always quoted this verse to say that there is a famine for, uh, of the word of God. There is no famine of the word of God. There has never been a generation that God has stopped speaking. God is always speaking. The problem and the onus is on the people that are listening. There is a famine of people who listen. There is a famine of people who listen. So, in this day, what we're doing, or what we're doing this morning, what Apostle is doing in this church, what we've done for many years, is we are training people to listen again. Now, you cannot listen for the word of the Lord the way you listen for earthly words. That's what we talked about earlier, that, that, that God speaks on many levels, and the true prophet has to learn to hear on many levels. One of the great um, uh, recent writers of um, theology uh, is doing a commentary on, on St. Teresa of Lisieux and, um, and says that the, that the mystic, the true mystic or the true prophet is the person who can see and experience God in anything and everything. See, the mystic can look at a flower and hear the Lord speak. The mystic can see ordinary times and find extraordinary experiences. The true prophet does not need fanfare and fireballs and lightning and flashing. That they can, in simple things, begin to experience and find God speaking. That's why I tell people all the time, you could hang out with me. Um, you could hang out with Apostle. We were at lunch yesterday. And he was saying the word of the Lord came to him for a young person there. See, most people wait till they get in church to hear the word of the Lord. I, I'll never forget, I was, I was 15 years old. I was preaching in Los Angeles at, at uh, Triumph the Church and Kingdom of God in Christ down there. And I was preaching in this church. And uh, we had went to go eat. And uh, we went to one of them Caesar's, Little Caesar's Pizza. And uh, we would get ordered pizza. And while I was ordering pizza, the guy that was with me who, who knew how I flowed. And I was, I was 15, 15, 16 years old then. And... Um, and I saw, the, I, I saw the young guy making the pizza, and the word of the Lord came on me at the pizza parlor, and I started prophesying to him at the pizza parlor. I said, look, the boy. God said, and he said, and my friend said, please, let him finish the pizza. Let him, don't, don't, he's going to be slobbering and not, it's not going all on the pizza. Don't, let him finish the pizza. See, I could be eating Fruit Loops and start prophesying. It don't, I don't need, I can hear the word of the Lord anywhere, and the Lord, I just looked at him, and the, the word of the Lord came. See, people that reserve the word of the Lord only for church or only for, for people that they know. I don't even let people prophesy to me anymore that know me. See, the prof, God does not speak to anybody that runs their mouth with everybody. God never trusts his word. If it is valuable, the prof, that's why the prophet's life is lonely. It is lonely because the word of the Lord must be valuable. And therefore, how much, how much can I speak to you if I know all your problems? How valuable is it when I say God is going, God spoke to me last night about your son, such and such and such and such, and you say, well, you didn't spend all, you know everything about him. How are you going to give me the word of the Lord and me take it as serious when you know all the stuff he's going through?